it has been a pleasure to welcome dr tamara son as the keynote speaker for this year's khurra murad memorial lecture she is a renowned scholar of muslim history and we certainly benefited from her insights into the dynamics of a great civilization as muslims we are commanded to remember the good deeds of our departed souls this is to perpetuate the legacy of moral excellence the remembrance therefore is a fulfillment of our religious obligation khurram murad memorial lecture is an annual event that serves to remind us about the life and works of one of the greatest contemporary thinkers of the muslim world he lived a life of piety and left a legacy of enlightenment to remember khurram jah murad is not a reminisce is not to reminisce him only as a person but to rekindle the flame of exalted values that his life has come to symbolize khurram murad has taught has has that just like individuals civilizations too have a moral fabric not wealth not military might not worldly possessions but moral and ethical profusion is what ensures their survival the expansion of muslim civilization from a rather insignificant desert to the shores of the atlantic through the indonesian archipelago is an undeniable testimony of the enduring power of moral and ethical representation over 200 books and other writings completed in a rather short span of life highlight the ethico moral access that khurram murad forcefully presented to the muslim youth he remained firmly focused on the youth for he believed that the future belonged to them and they were the guardians of the future khurram murad lived in turbulent times he belonged to the post colonial generation that was and still is struggling to gain an identity of its own torn between the nostalgic glory of the past and the crisis of identity he was successful in carving an intellectual niche for himself in his attempt to recover the mutilated psyche and restore the confidence he neither sang panegyric songs for the past generations nor did he incite for revenge steadily he stood for the cardinal values of islam hoping that the younger generation would be molded in a cast of the quranic wisdom and the prophetic example his last will to his own children is a fabulous discourse on his vision of the future for the muslim youth the revival of islam remained at the core of his thoughts yet again he looked towards the muslim youth as agents of change what distinguishes him from others is his exemplary life whereby his thoughts were not mere abstractions but practical examples to emulate khurram murad labored to create bridges between the creator and the creators creation the thrust of his arguments was that moral values are but a means to an end the adoption of those values was to generate and sustain a self identity seeped in the quranic message the ultimate objective was to forge a deep relationship with the creator it was therefore a strategy to fulfill the obligations towards both fellow human beings and the creator during the lifetime of khurram murad the resistance movements in the post colonial period presented a wide spectrum from passive response to armed struggle he did not succumb to any of those temptations he maintained a clear mind and the political mist did not cloud his vision of the islamic movement instead he continued to believe in the unflinching power of the muslim youth to shape the future khurram murad was not overwhelmed by the glitter of modernity he was neither burdened by the duplicity of diplomacy 
nor by the fear of speaking the truth. At a time when terrorism was being equated with Islam and nobody understood the Western agenda in casting the entire Muslim world as a pariah, Khurram Murad stood up to expose the hypocrisy in these words. If Pakistan makes a bomb, a nuclear bomb, it is christened as an Islamic bomb. The bomb which was dropped on Hiroshima was not a Christian bomb. And the bomb which was made by Israel is not a Jewish bomb. The bomb made by India is not a Hindu bomb. But if Pakistan succeeds in making a bomb, it is an Islamic bomb. <laughs> Furthermore, quoting St. Augustine, Khurram Murad narrates an incident. A pirate was captured and brought before Alexander the Great. Alexander asked the pirate, how dare you molest the people? The pirate replied, And how dare you molest the entire world? I am called a thief because I do it with a little ship only. You do it with a great navy and you are called an emperor. Under this scenario, powerless people doing trivial acts are the major terrorists of the world, while major powers perpetrating terrorism in many parts of the world are the civilized barbarians. It is, to credit, it is to the credit of Khurram Murad that he foresaw the inherent dangers of such bipolarity across civilizations. He extended the hand of peace and reconciliation, deeply inspired by comparing the conduct of the Crusaders in the massacre of both Muslims and Jews and what Salahuddin did at the conquest of Jerusalem. Khurram Murad has observed that the future of mankind cannot be peaceful unless the West and Islam can peacefully coexist and they can only coexist if they both let the other live according to their beliefs, culture, traditions, laws and social norms. If both can do that, only then can there be peace and coexistence between the two. It is important for the future of humanity. There are over 1.3 billion Muslims in the world. Every fifth person walking on the globe is a Muslim and they inhabit areas which are strategically important. Muslims are not out to deprive the West of the resources that are in their lands. They have to trade with the West. They have to have economic ties with the West. They have to sell their oil as well. Of course, they will guard against the extravagances of the rulers who have been doing the bidding of foreign powers who have been squandering the resources of Muslim countries, but they are not basically hostile. Hostility is only a reaction against what has been done to them and what is being done unashamedly. The two major civilizations of the world, the Western civilization and the Islamic civilization are neighbors. They are so much akin to each other and if they can cooperate, then the world can become a happy, and peaceful place to live, to live in. It is indeed an honor for us to remember Khurram Murad at this, at this critical juncture in the history of mankind. UMT is but an extension of the mindset of Khurram Murad. We hope that we can continue our role in the affairs of the nations where world civilizations coexist towards a bright and prosperous future. <laughs>